so I lost my job and I have to start vlogging. Are the words I hope I never have to say because I really suck at it. Look, my hat's crooked. My hat's crooked, if it's on my head, you can tell it's crooked. If I put it like this, it's straight. Because the bill or the visor is not symmetrical with the crown. That You got that much space between there and the mesh, the crown and the mesh. And on this side, you have way more, way more room, way more spacing between the mesh and the crown. What the hell, Under Armour? This is a $35 hat. Still gonna wear my hat though. So I have a series of pictures I took while building my garage. Um, I know I should have made a video, but I didn't. I didn't know I was gonna actually make a video of my, my garage build, uh, which is quite ironic that I'm actually making one right now. Um, so starting off with my sketch here that I drew not only for myself, but for the city planning department as a reference to the structure in relation to the house and property lines and back sets and whatever. All these points have to be mentioned in the drawings that you present to the city and planning department before they give you the permit. The permit itself where I live cost me uh, 212 uh, Canadian dollars. So with that said, we'll move on with the video here. This is actually me on a ladder. This is my brother here in the pink hard hat. I was very ill-advised from somebody. We kind of MacGyvered up a, a ladder on top of the roof shed. Unfortunately, the, the force of the tree overcome the force of my brother and the tree actually um, flopped over the fence and into the back lane. There wasn't anybody driving. Okay, this is the shed that was there when we first moved in. We, we tore that down. Um, it, it was act, it was a, it was a ten no sorry it was a ten by eight shed it was it was fairly small yeah that's so well, that's the stump from uh, that tree which was growing on top of the slab and under the slab and that was a pain in the ass to get out here we got my dad helping me out with uh, with a jackhammering and the removal of the slab we got the slab removed here already um, thankfully for. Uh, my boss here let me out this trailer so we could haul a bunch of concrete and a bunch of sand out of here. There's tons. Of, I got. actually have a receipt here I'll put up on the screen. So after everything's said and done, we hauled five loads of a mix of concrete, sand, and mud, uh, adding up to 12,420 kilograms or in pounds, 27,000 pounds or something. Okay, so after many attempts of removing the stump with my truck and and a shovel and just tools that would not get it out, we had to rent this excavator, this mini excavator, to get it out. Took it out no problem. Here's me with the mini X. Actually, the the most expensive part of of the preparation of this job was renting out this this excavator. Luckily, I knew how to operate it. We got the stump out. Um, Here's a, a different perspective of, of the garage. Slab, foundation, dug out. I dug out the, the footing here. So, so in this picture, you actually have a clear perspective of what's actually going on. So this is actually the, per the perimeter of the foundation. And this height here on the 2x12 is uh, top of a curb. The top of the six-inch curb that I have. Um, you can do whatever you want. You don't actually. You don't have to have a six-inch curb on your slab, but I opted to to do it uh, in that fashion. And what you want to do, um, rule of thumb, is have a, uh, the grade uh, even, right? So the grade, the footing is even, so the so the garage structure can can sit on it. And um, you want to have rule of thumb is you want to have this sloping um, in my case I have a four inch slope from the back of the wall here to the where the driveway begins in the in the garage door so the way you want to grade this is look at where your your doors are in your existing house and, and try to match that with the garage doors so 
match match the doors to door so it's not too low where your garage is going to flood and it's not too high where you have to do too much backfill and it'll it'll probably look stupid having the garage up so high off the ground as the grading and that's the best uh, illustration i can give you as as per how grading works uh, but it's totally up to your discretion. Use your own creativity, really. But um, grading should be relatively close to door to door, door to garage, in relation to her, to the door of the house. If you know what I mean. V V V. Okay, this is the man door, 38 inch man door. That's what I did. Um, you can see this little box here. That if I'm not a fucking lazy. F I will circle so you can um, have a perspective of what the curb is. So in here, this is a part of the curb, which in turn went all the way around the perimeter. I actually had I actually had some really nice friends come help me um, turn some of this gravel over. So I'm going to put up an illustration of what this uh, slab, what either wise, look like because you can't really tell from this picture. So I'm going to pull up a a picture here pretty well illustrates what illustrates what's happening here so you got the three quarter down gravel four to six inches it's completely up to your discretion but I like I went six inches and then you have your thick and edged which is this uh, circle right here in blue uh, you got the rebar so in in a brown here so you got the 10 mil 18 inches on center and these two these four 20 m bars and you got uh, a little 10 m bar going uh, down the center of the curb and this is con and this is considered a monolithic slab if you were to pour this all in a single pour to simplify what a monolithic slab is it is essentially a foundation system constructed as a single concrete pour that consists of the concrete slab with the thickened uh, edge portions of the slab as opposed to having the foundation uh, or the thickened edged um, or, or the grade beam poured first and afterwards coming and pouring the slab separately but we're not going to go into much detail with that you can see that I have my PVC schedule 40 conduit sticking up from the center of the curb through the concrete that goes that's for the electrical um, wire that's I'm going to run uh, through the, the house and that goes down um, roughly two feet below below grade, below the grass. Um, next day, I actually waited just a couple days to strip it, strip the forms out. Uh, did a little bit of backfill. I just did a little bit of um, quarter down clean uh, right up against the concrete because I didn't want to fill it directly have it directly in contact with the with the soil I actually waited a few weeks to start the framing and over here you can see we started with the gable end this wall is actually the garage door uh, the overhead uh, door uh, it's made it's out of 2 by 6 this wall in particular was uh, built out of 2 by 6 but the rest of the garage was uh, 2 by 4 framing we lifted it with the, the truss already in and sheeted uh, makes our life much more easier uh, as opposed to having to um, figure out uh, the truck well it, it's still it's still manageable to do the trusses but I think I find it much easier to uh, include the truss already on the gable end plywood and that way that's out of your hairs and you don't have to worry about that anymore got a picture here of the garage practically completed this was already uh, mid-afternoon took us about I don't know three quarters of the day to build this uh, so that's the man door and that's the 64 inch high window only got one window in this garage so remember this is a 22 by 18 foot garage 18 wide by 22 deep forgot to mention that it's 18 wide by 22 deep here's some shots of the inside as you can see that gable end does not come with those in-betweens 2 by 4s so you would have to uh, include that for inspection approval overkill on the headers here I uh, went 2 by 10 or 2 by 8 I think that's I had some leftover 2 by 10 so I utilized the leftover 2 by 10 over top of the window over top of the door hey it's not good unless it's overkill 
in my mind. Uh, full length, 18 foot, 2x12, 3 ply for the overhead. This is a must. Don't try to cheat your way through this because they will find you and who wants scab pieces up there anyways. Make sure these these lintels, if they're not full length LVLs, uh, they have to be full length. If, if they're not LVLs, make sure they're at least 3 ply, 2x12 for a 16 foot overhead door. Don't fuck around with this shit. This is important. Uh, we got the roof. I didn't get any shots of the roof. Or did I? I had a video here. I don't know what happened to it. So this is the fascia that we uh, we managed to do this in a funny way, but it still worked out. Yeah. I, I would have preferred if the, the plywood went over top of the fascia board as opposed to the fascia board being flush with the, with the plywood. I know you guys are going to give me heck in the comments below, but that's just the way that it worked out. Uh, worked out good. All the 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 drip edge and all that and the shingles cover that and it's it's pretty solid. I'm not too worried about that. So we also did some soffit work here. Uh, I did a 12 inch overhang. Um, so we just cut um, pieces of soffit to um, 12 inches and installed them. Uh, we didn't go about uh, doing a bird box. We just offset the the, the soffit so we would uh, eliminate the need for a bird box. I think that look uh, looks much, much cleaner as opposed to using the bird box method. This was shingling day. I got my brother on the roof helping me out with the shingles. Uh, as you can see from, I don't have a better, I think I do. We got a steel frame and a steel uh, door, commercial steel frame door, whatever. They're the Barkwood GAF uh, laminated shingles, but we had to run the all of the drip edge um, all the way around. Um, we I only have one roof vent. At, at this point in time, I wasn't sure if I was going to insulate the garage and vapor barrier, but uh, I have since started uh, insulating, so it's it's going to be an insulated heated garage hopefully by next winter. Where was I? Okay, garage door. I don't have installation of the garage door, but essentially how this works is that these come in four panels. You start with the bottom panel. Obviously, you level off the bottom panel. You put one track in on one side. You put one panel in, level off that panel, uh, and you work your way up with uh, the rest of the panels. Once you have all the panels in, you will install the other side of the track and so on and so forth. It's pretty... It's pretty straightforward, just to make sure it's all level and uh, tighten the screws. Real tight. Real tight. Did some flash work here. Some quick flash work. Um, I got these custom made flashings from a layer metal. Uh, relatively cheap price. I think I paid 250 bucks. I know that's not cheap, but you get what you pay for. It's good quality. I think it's 19 gauge. 24 gauge? I'm not sure. I think it's 24 gauge actually. I think it's 24. Um, did some custom metal bending work here. Um, you're not going to see any of this after the siding's on. So uh, I, I like uh, I like attention to detail. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call this professional work, but it's pretty slick. It's pretty slick, if you ask me. Pretty dope. Um, moving on, what am I going to show you here? I tie back the whole building before winter. Um, Next up is um, the electrical. I started some electrical here. Here's that PVC conduit that I mentioned earlier. When we pour the slab, it's coming up through the panel. Uh, I got a 60 amp panel installed already, and I'm running some wires as of right now. Uh, this is an occupancy, occupancy sensor switch, which is pretty cool, pretty dope. Um, I actually took these pictures recently of my of me insulating the garage so like I said the garage will be insulated uh, and such that is the garage door opener what else can I say I got hurricane clips top and bottom um, these were anchor bolted so these were I forgot to mention earlier, these were anchor bolted every four feet Inspector likes to see anchor bolts every four feet, so um, why not? Uh, it's not good until it's overkill. 
I wanted to mention a very important fact that I slips my mind now, but it'll it'll come to me. If, if you guys have any questions, leave them down below. I'll I'll get I'll get to them as, as soon as I can. I really do like to answer any of your guys' questions and share information. If I'm if you're not asking me, I'm asking you because this is all about uh, sharing info. Which, hey, information is knowledge. <laughs> what? Information is knowledge. I also wanted to mention that if you live in a colder climate, such as Canada, like myself, winters are harsh, man. They're really harsh, not only on people and animals, but also on batteries. And being that batteries are all the new rage in today's day and age, do and, and they don't like extreme cold weather. And being that batteries do not like extreme cold weather and are highly susceptible to extreme cold for long periods of time if you don't park your vehicle inside in a heated area. Uh, ultimately resulting in a shorter lifespan well now if you happen to have a warm garage to say park your car in when you don't need it or just to park it in overnight uh, whatever you have this option and uh, like I said in the beginning of the video where I mentioned uh, that how a garage could add not only value to your house uh, and to the property but also uh, be a complement to your electrical vehicle if you have an EV car, an electrical vehicle. You can now park your car inside and not worry about leaving it outside all night uh, or in extreme cold temperatures and running the risk of compromising the integrity of your battery. Yeah, that's that's my point. That's that's exactly the point that I wanted to, to get across. Now, please, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them below. You know what to do down there. Um, I'll be happy to discuss them with you, and I will see you later.